Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with the next update for my Pandals eyeshadows. This is one of my favorite projects to do and to update. I always love updating you guys on this project. And today we have a decently exciting update. I'm really, really happy with the progress that I have. I've done basically as well as I feel like I could have, especially because I am pre-filming this video a little bit. I think this is going to be about a week pre-filmed. Actually, it's a week and two days so it's quite a lot pre-filmed just because this is going to go up when i'm in sweden and i'm going to sweden to see my family um so i wanted to pre-film everything because i don't want to like spend time filming while i'm there because i obviously don't get to go home to sweden very often so that's why i'm pre-filming uh, and considering i am filming this more than a week in advance i'm really really happy with all of the progress so i'm going to talk you through all of that in a second this project was created by Alexi. Uh, she doesn't post on YouTube anymore, but she created this project where she, you kind of take eyeshadows. She used to randomize the palette and select the shade, I believe. Um, and you randomize, so you randomize the eyeshadow to work on. And from there, you try to hit pan. I am doing it a little bit differently this year. I am working off of Lainey's prompts. So Makeup with Lainey, she did a prompt list a couple years ago that I have been using, which I'm really, really enjoying. Basically, you randomize prompts instead of the palettes, and then I pick a shadow, kind of judging from that prompt. So that's how I'm doing it this year. I am working on four shadows at any point in time, and my goal is, of course, to hit pan but I can roll things out after 15 uses if I feel like it or if I have hit that point. So yeah, that's my main rules. And when it comes to roll-ins, I want to have a minimum one mat at any point in time, but otherwise anything is fair game. I can use singles, I can use palettes, as long as again, obviously they kind of correlate to the props that I roll. So those are all my rules. I'm gonna jump into the first shadow, but before I do so, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you in the family. Let's jump into the video. So we're going to start off with this palette right here. So this one has been in the project for quite a bit now. I was working on two shades, but I have rolled all of them out last month. So now I'm only working on the one. And that shade is the shade Jade, which I rolled in for a green matte. And this one looked like this when I first rolled it in. It is a beautiful kind of like swampy, warm toned, like green with some yellow undertones. I really do like it. Uh, in the first month, I reached for this one three times, and it was a little bit of use at that point. Um, I wouldn't really say a dip or anything, but you can see that it's been used. Uh, it is, again, a really beautiful shade, and these are actually some of my favorite type of greens to reach for, so it's been really fun to work on. In the second month, it was in, I reached for it four additional times for a total of seven, and this is what it looked like at that point. Uh, obviously, since that point, I've been continuously working on this shadow. It hasn't been as easy to incorporate this because I've been focusing on other things. And as you might know, my product level up palette is my Beauty Bay Love Nose palette, which is a lot of purpley pink shades. And this one doesn't really necessarily go with those shades. Um, I can, of course, mix shades up, but I don't really have many other greens that I'm panning at the moment. So because of all of that, I've only reached for this shade once since the last update, and this is what it looks like today. So you might be able to see a little bit of a difference. I feel like I have kind of made that dip a little bit deeper, even just in one use. And when I did use it in that one look, I did use it quite heavily. I packed it on quite a lot, so I do feel like the dip has gotten deeper. But again, that is where this shadow stands today. This shadow is definitely getting used. I, this this is 100% like a clear dip now. Hopefully you can pick it up on camera too. I think you might be able to. Uh, but yeah, it, like I said, it is a clear dip in the shadow. I really do like this one. It is fun and I can wear this one, of course, with like other greens. I can wear it more lightly. Um, I did a look with this one with like a light kind of shimmery green all over the lid and I incorporated like a yellow matte as well. And I think that was like, it. I did a more light look and I love that and um, I also can use this one with my panda palette so like the warm browns in my panda palette works nicely with this one too so you you know it does have some flexibility to it but I haven't reached for it as much as I wanted in the past month I'm currently standing at eight uses for the shadow so I do have seven more uses to go or pan and looking at like the shade underneath it which I do have panel which is also a matte I do feel like I have quite a long way to go, but you never know, I might be able to pan in seven uses. Considering I have almost half the uses left, maybe I am halfway to pan, we'll see. But it's going to be interesting to see if I can hit pan on this one with those uses, or if I just be able to get a really, really good dip in it. Either way, uh, this one is going to stay in for one more month. Ideally, I always try to finish things or roll things out within three months in any project, apart from my rolling project pan, which has things in for like the long haul, uh, and also like other things that I have in for like the long haul. 
those are fine but most of my kind of usage projects like this i do have um i do try to have them out within three months but unfortunately this one is going to stay in for the fourth month but i'm absolutely fine with that i'm hoping to get some more use out of this one I, i'm not going to bring it to sweden though because i'm not going to bring this whole palette but when i'm back i'll be sure to reach for this palette more and try to have those seven users done in the next one because i would really like to roll this one out next month and i almost forgot but that is the swatch of that shadow and again it is staying in the project the second shadow that i have has been in for two months now so it is also one that i was working on for a little bit longer this one I rolled in for the prompt G and I decided to go with the shade Golden Girl from Shine by SD, which is a single shadow. I'm not going to show you what it looks like yet, uh, but I'm going to show you what this one looked like when I first rolled it in, which is, is like this. Um, it is a beautiful, beautiful shadow. It is kind of like a brown base, like a neutral brown base with gold and like greeny gold sparkles that goes into more of a taupey cool tone at a harsh angle. Really love this shadow. It's a beautiful kind of everyday shadow. You can share it out. You can build it up. In the first month, this was in the project. I reached for it three times and this is what it looked like at that point. You could definitely see there was a little bit of use, but obviously three uses isn't going to get you too far. So I still had a long ways to go at this point, but I was really enjoying it and kind of saving it for like special occasions or not special occasions, but like when I wanted to vamp up an everyday look. Since the last update, I've used this one four additional times and this is where it is today. So I'm standing at seven uses and I can definitely see a bit more of a dip now. Um, again, I'm definitely far away from pan, but I'm happy to see the dip. This is a very kind of pigmented shadow and even though it is an indie shadow which usually is a little bit kind of looser pressed and more flaky usually because of the particle size this one is definitely a little bit drier and a little bit kind of harder pressed not in a bad way it's still very sparkly and very pretty but i am not sure if i'm going to be able to hit pan within those 15 uses but either way i'm really enjoying this shadow and it's super fun to work on so yes there is this shadow today and you can definitely see that dip now it is a beautiful shadow i really do love this shadow I really do love this one quite a bit. It's been again working beautifully with my palette, uh, palette which is again the Soft Glam palette. It works beautiful with those kind of matte shades. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch it out as well so you can see what it looks like in this watch. And there you have it. First of all, I mean, it works really nicely with this green, but also, again, you can see that brown base, which makes it work super nicely with my Panda palette. Yeah, I really am enjoying this shadow. Uh, of course, it is going to stay in because I haven't reached my usage goal and I also don't have Pan yet, but I'm excited to keep working on it because this is such a beautiful shade. You can see how sparkly and like shiny it is as well. So the next two shadows were both rolled in last month. So I've only worked on them for one month. The first one I rolled in for In the Corner Shadow. And I decided to go with one from my Natasha Lona Metropolis palette, which is the shade Queen. It looked like this when I first rolled it in. It is the most standard type of In the Corner shade. It is um, kind of like a pinkier undertone, like a champagne with a gold shift running through it. So if anything, it leans a little bit warmer, but it does have that kind of champagne undertone to it i already had a dip in this one when i first rolled it in because i had used this one quite a bit in the palette it is the only kind of in the corner shade that i can use quite freely in that palette so i had a lot of use on it already in the past month i have reached for this one 11 times and this is what this one looks like today so you might be able to see in this shadow that i was able to pan on it i actually pan on it this morning and um, this is the second look that i'm doing today because i filmed this morning worked and i'm redone my makeup to film again after work so i did hit pan on this one this morning when i did my first eyeshadow look of the day and i'm really really excited about that because it does mean that we have a shadow rolling out as well as a pan added to my collection so yes very very exciting you can see the pan right there in the middle it's like quite a small pan but again i hit this this morning uh, and since i'm using it as an any corner highlight it, i'm using quite a small brush which also why it's um, quite centered there but yeah really really happy about the shadow and that is the swatch as you can see it does have that kind of gold sheen running through it so it's, it, it is a little bit warmer but it's a beautiful everyday kind of in a corner shade it's like nothing too sparkly and um, but it still gives a good shine and i've really been enjoying it as an in corner highlight it was really easy to reach for this one uh, 11 times for to pan i knew that this was going to be out and um, i mean actually i didn't know because i hit pan on this one this morning but i did actually decide to film this video today because i hit pan on this one but i did think i would either hit my 15 use goal or i hit pan on it before my next update and um, and again since i'm pre-filming this one 11 uses is really really good and i have used all of those 11 uses exclusively on my eyes sometimes i use things on my nails or things like that i'm actually using a different eyeshadow on my nails today but um all of those 11 uses were purely on my eyes which is really really impressive for me in a month especially considering i'm panning so many shades so 
very happy with the usage and the pan in the shadow and again it will be rolling out the last shadow we have to talk about is one that i rolled in for blue shadow shimmer and i decided to go with one of my favorite blue shadows in my collection which is the shade crown jewel from cleona this is one of their vibrant multichromes which you can definitely see because this shadow is really really vibrant it has this like almost cobalt blue base with a gold and green shift running through it and then at a harsh angle is like an even more vibrant kind of ocean blue i would describe it as it is super pretty but again very vibrant and i have really been enjoying playing around with this one especially now in summer i feel like this is such a summery shade maybe it's because it reminds me of like a pool or something but it is a super summery shade in the past month i have actually been able to reach for this one 15 times which of course means that i'm gonna roll it out but this is what it looks like today so you might be able to see that i don't have pan on it but i do have a really good dip in the shadow these clear eye shadows are super pigmented and you don't need very much of them and the pans are also quite deep they even like a bit raised out of the pan when you first get them so you know it takes a lot of use to pan on them. I actually never hit pan on a clear eye shadow. I'm very close on a couple, but I've never hit pan on one on them. So 50 uses usually don't get me to pan with those eyeshadows, but that's okay. I'm just really, really happy with what this eyeshadow looks like today. Yes, so that is what this eyeshadow looks like. You, you've seen it in the overview, but there it is again. And you can also see the swatch of it right there. You can again see that kind of really bright cobalt blue base, and then mainly like the gold shift in the swatch straight on. I do have a swatch video with all my clear eyeshadows if you want to see it with all the shifts, but but in general, this is just such a beautiful eyeshadow and I really have been enjoying it. 15 uses though in a month is very, very high. I'm actually wearing it for the 15th time today. It's like the blue that's on the center kind of on my eyelid. I don't know how well you can see it on camera. I think the gold shift comes out quite a lot on camera. And then I'm wearing a lighter blue in the kind of inner lid. But I really have been enjoying this one. And um, the reason why I have such a high usage on it is because I was able to reach for it as a manicure. If you've seen in a couple of videos, maybe around this, that I have like blue nails, that was this shadow. I used it on my nails. So five out of those uses were on my nails, but I also used it like on my lid. I've used it as a liner. I used it like as a detail, stuff like that. But yeah, I'm really happy. I'm surprised that I was able to reach for this one uh, 15 times. I really didn't expect it, especially because it's such a vibrant shade but i do think because i'm working from home and um, in the past month i have been able to do more kind of bright looks than normal because again i'm used at home most of the time if i go to the office i probably wouldn't wear this all over the lid i would 100 percent wear it like, as like a wing or an accent but um all over the lid would be a bit too like impactful for work i don't mind wearing colorful shades but this one is just a little bit too vibrant for me uh, but in general really happy with the shadow and i was very very happy to roll it in and also get some use out of it so those are the four shadows that i've been working on and the bottom two are rolling out and the top two are staying in so i swatched the two that are staying in right here the two more green shades are staying in which is surprising for me because i feel like these are the shades that i like a lot even though i haven't been wearing greens as much as normal so since i only have two shades staying in right now uh, what we need to do next is roll in two more shadows to complete the color story of four so I pulled up my Tiny Decisions app and I'm going to go ahead and roll two prompts so we can see what I get and then I will pick my shadows judging from that. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the first prompt and we'll see what I get. Shadow from your favorite palette. Okay, that is interesting. Um, I need to decide what my favorite palette is because I've always said it's just like the same palette. But recently I did my... Um, like ultimate palette battle and a different palette than my like what i feel like is my favorite palette one so i need to like decide between those two i think but we'll see i have time to decide that is going to be the first prompt and then the second one is going to be drugstore shadow okay i don't really have that many drugstore palettes left in my collection but i'm sure i can find something and roll that in I think it's going to take a little bit of time to figure out what shadows I want to roll in. So I'm going to take a break, figure that out, and I will be back. I mean, for you guys, it will just be a second, but I'll be back shortly to share with you what I've decided to roll in. All right, so that was quicker than I thought it would be. And we have my new color store right there, sneak peek. But I'm going to talk you through two palettes I'm rolling in because both of them are palettes. Uh, for firstly, we're going to have for my shadow from my favorite palette. I have always said that the Natasha Nona Gold Palette is my favorite palette, which it probably still is. Yeah, I think it is. But I did do my uh, ultimate palette battle, which I had a palette win. And I just felt like to switch it up because I always picked my Natasha Nona for that prompt. 
I decided to switch it up. And the palette that I decided to go with, if you remember, is this one right here, which is one of my uh, Pat McGrath palettes. And this is the Utopian Dreams. This is what it looks like on the inside. I, To be fair, this is still one of my absolute favorite palettes. I absolutely love this one. It was the first Pat McGrath palette I ever got. It was a gift from my boyfriend. And I just adore this palette. So in here, I could obviously pick whichever shade I want. I'm 100% expecting this to be a 15 user and no pan because I feel like these palettes are very, very hard to pan on. But I decided to go with my favorite shade in the palette, which is this one right here. I think it's called Astro Astral Venusian Orchid. Or is that? No, I think that's that one. This one is called something else. Uh, but I think that's what it's called Astral Venusian Orchid, I believe. But otherwise, I'm going to put it on screen. That is the one I'm going to roll in. I absolutely love that shadow. It's one of my favorites. I think it's such a beautiful one. And it's just such a sparkly, beautiful pink shade. You can't even see fully how like, insanely sparkly and dimensional it is in real life. But you can see this watch right there. And I feel like it does do it pretty well, uh, justice. But overall, it's just so, so beautiful. So I'm very excited to roll that one in. And that is going to be the one I roll in for, for a shade for my favorite palette. So this palette right here. Then for my drugstore shadow, I decided to go with a palette that I don't know if this technically is drugstore. I don't, I looked through and I don't really have any like pure drugstore palettes left in my collection. Um, there was only this brand and one more that I was considering. The other brand was Colourpop. And then we have this brand right here, which is Beauty Bay. Neither of these are necessarily a drugstore, uh, but I feel like those are like the most affordable palettes in my collection. So I decided to go with one of those. And of course, as you can see, I go, went with my Wilderness palette. I thought that I hadn't showed this one any love this year. And I feel like I had some shades in here that would work perfectly with some of the other shades that I'm panning in this project. So this is what the palette looks like. I already have pan on a lot of shades. I have this one as my product level up. Was it level five? One, two, three, four, five. I mean, I have seven pans in here which is crazy. So I think I had this one for my product level up level five and then I had pan on two more shades, which is funny because I'm currently panning my other Beauty Bay palette as my product level up level five. Anyway, I have a lot of pans in here. So I was thinking like, which shade should I go for? And I'd said that with that kind of green shade from the Odensai Red Dragon palette, I didn't really have any greens to go with it. So I decided to roll in a green to go with it. And I decided to go with this shade right here in the middle, which I think is called Eucalyptus. Yes, it is. Which is a deeper green, but I thought that would go perfectly with that other green. And then I can create some like more pure green looks. And I know that I only have like seven uses left on the other green. But since this one is a darker shade, I think I can pack it on more. And maybe I can hit pan on it. May I may maybe not in like those seven uses, but even after that, I can maybe use it as a liner or with other shades that I'm panning. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and roll in Eucalyptus from this palette as my last shadow. So there you have it, you guys. That is my update. That is the last color story. This is the color story I was just working on. And this right here is my new color story. I prefer my new color story. I think it's more cohesive. I'm really, really excited. I'm excited to work with these shades. Next month, I'm hoping to have out this shade right here and then this shade. So the top two I'm hoping to have out next month, but we'll see how it goes when I continue working on them. But again, I'm going to wrap up the video right here. If you do like my Pandas eyeshadow series, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. And let me know if you're doing something similar in your own collection. How are you doing with your project down below? I love hearing from you guys. Do you prefer my old color, sorry, my new color story or my old color story? Also let me know. I would love to hear because I personally love this one, but these are more kind of my tones, I guess. And that's why I prefer this color story. But I hope you guys are having an amazing day wherever you are. And I will catch you in my next one. Bye, guys.